7 a.m. We're off to the airport. We're flying to Pico Islands. Finally, we're going to Pico, baby. Yeah, super excited. Hello. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you. Man. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. How you doing? Nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> you no, good? Nice to see you. Good bye, bro. Abraço. What's up guys, welcome to another episode of the greatest vlog in the Azores. All right, today we're with uh, the gentleman from Pico Me Up and they'll be looking after us for the next three days. I think it's three days, eh? Four days. And uh, we're starting off slow with a liqueur tasting. There is a little bit of a bad weather outside. So we're starting off here and we're filming some stuff and meeting this amazing gentleman. This vlog is going to be awesome. Stick around. Você tem esta vértebra uma uma baleia. Exato. E essa história. Baleia ou cachalota, há quem diz o cachalota, diz a baleia, mas é tudo a mesma. Olha, aquilo para vos dizer a verdade, aquilo veio dos meus avós. Aquilo dizia que aquilo era um banco. Era o único banco que havia para se sentar. Era aquilo e eles cortavam aqui as pontas, está a ver? Mas o que aconteceu foi que partiram o serrote e como não tinham mais nem serrote nem mais dinheiro nenhum. Ficou aquele para cortar, todos os outros estão cortados, os quatro à volta, menos aquele. Mas havia dúzias e dúzias e dúzias. E eu descobri hoje que este escapou, porque eu e os meus irmãos já éramos muito pescadores, já crianças. E depois dele já não ser banco, pois transformaram-se em bancos assim, em madeira, transformou-se num picadeiro para preparar o engodo para a pesca. E os dentes, minha mãe tinha dentes de amolar a, a palha, porque eu encontrei isto muito tarde, eu encontrei isto agora aqui, há 10, 15 anos. E tem ainda alguns ossos, mas estão bordados e aguardei de tal maneira que ainda não apareceram. Mas, mas ele tem ainda ossos de baleia, porque tem muita coisa, eu guardo tudo, está a perceber aí. So, chef, now you, you are going to fishing. I'm going to do some fishing? Yeah. Okay. So, you're going to put inside, you're going to leave it slowly, okay. and then you're going to hear uh, it's going to start bubbling. Okay. And then yeah. as soon as it stops, you pull slowly up. All right. Okay. Yeah. So this is fun. I'm going to do this in Madeira. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wine fishing. Wine fishing. There you go. More. More. How cool is that? Now you no. That is so. That is so cool. <laughs> That's now so cool. you have to drink it. Drink it from from it. From it. Yeah. Okay. But do I use the? No, yeah, yeah. You use. Turn to me. Huh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> E conforme a posição da boca dá o som exatamente igual, mas mais para aqui. É. É good. É good. It's like Madeira wine almost. Yeah. Almost. It's different. It's nice. I like it. Hey, a ideia de você ter tanto tipo de licor, de onde é que veio essa? A ideia veio porque eu fazia uma coleção já em França de tudo o que era licores em miniaturas. Oh. Eu, eu sou apaixonado por por tudo o que é assim, coisas antigas, tem ali bebidas que já não existem em França, por exemplo, que existiam quando eu cheguei à França, quando eu era criança, e com as noites sim, eu tinha para aí duas mil e tal de rafinhas daquelas. Algumas evaporaram-se, algumas trocoias, outras ficaram lá, e trouxe umas contas. Depois, lembrei-me, isto aqui estava sem, sem efeito, não é? Lembrei-me de fazer isto e dar em fazer licores. Como eu não gosto muito do vinho do pico, transformo-me em, em álcool, 
e depois desses álcools faço infusão de, de todos os perfumes que eu posso imaginar. Alguns não saem certo, faço estas experiências em pequenas quantidades e depois, se é certa, faço em quantidades maiores. So this is what it feels like to be a tourist in Pico Island. You know, usually I'm the one giving this experience to other people, but you know, it feels great being the one eating the limpets. They got limpets here as well. They're also super tasty. And uh, some passion fruit uh, sangria. Today is kind of a chill day. There is some bad weather and whatever, so we're chilling out. But off to an amazing start for sure and well. As I said before, the guys at Pico Me Up are looking after us and they've put us in this hostel over here called the Porto Velho. It's right in the middle of the city or the town, should I say. It's a pretty small place, Pico Island. And um, it's a great place, really beautiful hostel and everything that we could need. And of course, being very central, we've got the church here, everything kind of revolves around the church. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, Pico Island is the second largest uh, island geographically speaking or geologically speaking uh, in the Azores and it's also known as Ilha Preta because of its black volcanic uh, soil and rock and all of that right it's also the youngest island in the Azores uh, being formed only 300,000 years ago which is pretty crazy um, this of course all of this according to Wikipedia and um, today, hopefully, we're going to be uh, checking out uh, these vineyards, trying the white wine, uh, and we're going to be exploring a little bit of the island with the guys from Pico Me Up. Should be absolutely fantastic. Stick around. We're on a sunset uh, jeep tour here in the vines in uh, Pico Island and we're with David from Pico Me Up. David? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about these vines and what makes it so unique? Well, basically this is a unique site in the world, UNESCO heritage site, uh, protected uh, because it is the only one on the planet like this. Why? Uh, in the 17th century, it was uh, a very strong disease in the islands and all the vines and mo most of the plantations died. And what they did was actually learned how to rebuild. And mostly what's happening nowadays with all the COVID and all that, COVID, yeah. um, basically it's the same type of resilience. Uh, they used their inner spirit to build and rebuild. And using the rocks as a unique way to capture the energy of the sun and maintain it during the night surrounding the vines so the grapes will ripe properly and create the unique uh, pico wine which is known worldwide as probably one of the best and the healthiest wines you can have. Well, I can't wait to try it, man. He will do it. <laughs> so uh, we've been out today filming and uh, today you're looking at the world's best drone pilots. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, we were filming this amazing shot. I mean, like the drone was coming out backwards like this and they were on the boat and the boat was like turning and the uh, is that is Fayal. Fayal Island in the back was like shining and I'm like, 
oh, the guys that pick me up are going to love this so much. And then all of a sudden, pew, gone. So yeah, I crashed my Jeep. My Jeep. <laughs> I did, thank God I didn't crash my Jeep. I crashed my drone. I crashed my drone. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Because tomorrow, we're climbing Pico. And that's been on my bucket list for a couple of years. And you know what? Like, I'll sacrifice 10 drones for this experience. So I'm just like super psyched. Can't wait. David? Definitely. So David, you, like, you've told me that everyone here is quite mystic and that they think that they're going to live forever, right? Yes, I think that's what is a, the most important thing about Pico Island. The mystic of the mountain, many studies prove that the pyramids in Egypt used to communicate through the clouds, energies, past messages, like, like, uh, like now we do through a text message, they used to communicate with sounds like that. <laughs> well, they say that in the middle of the Atlantic, the Pico mountain was used as well. And then the structures here, the pyramids that you're gonna see after over there. But I came here to show you that there is a passage right here and, and it's been studied by archeologists all over the place in many different countries as well. And, and this location right here, what the Portuguese people would say, oh, it was to hide when the rain, this and that would come and they were working. In fact, they found and, and studies proven that from here, and you would go, we already went there a few times. Uh, you see the red marks on the floor. Those are marks from the archaeologist studies. Okay. And underground there, there is a passage straight that would go from this wall that you see here above you. Yeah. And it goes across and then underground to the pyramid that you will see on that side there. The one that we just walked That past? we just passed by. So, so basically they are proposing suggesting that the pyramids that they call Moroisus here, they actually were structures measured properly and studied as pyramids to last longer because of the communication done and other types of uh, things that they used to do at that time, right? So uh, definitely is something that is the mystic part of the island. And I, I stay very curious about it. It excites me a lot because it is beautiful to know that these islands were actually more than just a place to live uh, for the Portuguese, which discover the islands, but it was more than that. And it's, uh, it is not just me, do your Google search and you will find many, many of those studies being proven real. Funny enough, this is actually one of the tours that we at uh, Pick Me Up love to do because it is more than just a tour. It is educational, entertaining, but at the same time, you know, it brings that side of us that we all have of wonder. Yeah. Like, where, where did we come from? Where are we going? Who are we now? And, and you tell me that thousands of years ago, others were here where we are right now. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then they, they built this. And then, see, you see how in this side is all already coming down? Yeah. Is because it because of time? You know? time. But yeah. when you go to the side there, you see the structure in perfect condition as a pyramid and the design. The tools they found on that excavation there, that way prehistoric type of thing. So it's not like something, oh, okay, it's just, no, it's not. It's, it's quite something. And they have, I don't want to say the number because I really don't know the number exactly, but they have a lot of them. And then they started seeing the alignment of the stars. And then they started to say, wait a minute, it's more. Ciao. Obrigado. Obrigado. What a day, huh? Can't believe I lost my drone. I'm a little bit sad about that, but just being here is just absolutely amazing. And you know what? One of the things that has impressed me the most about this small little island is the food. The food has been incredible the last day and a half. 
two days. Uh, I've had some of the best food, you know, in Portugal. So very, very, uh, you know, big up to Pico Island for amazing food and this uh, very unique island. And some of you may be asking or thinking like, Jeff, what are you doing? Like promoting Azores, you know, like I thought it's just supposed to be promoting Madeira and stuff, but I'm trying to promote an idea, you know, of how we need to get out and we need to see these places and what it does to us. Because even today, you know, I've lost the drone, but I don't even like, I don't even care about it, right? Like I'm going up, I'm, I'm climbing the biggest mountain in Portugal and I've been wanting to do this for, you know, since I basically discovered that this place existed like three or four years ago. So yeah, you know, that's what travel does to you. Um, and on that note, hit the like and subscribe button. We got loads of cool stuff coming, including tomorrow's climb up to Pico. So uh, that should be awesome coming out next week, Monday. Remember videos come out every Monday, 7 p.m. on our YouTube uh, channel. Hit the like and subscribe. See you guys later. Let's hit the road.